Hello. This is how you can shut the mouth of David Wood whenever he speaks against the prophet, describing him that he had sex with Maria, the Coptic woman. Okay? Uh, we first have to describe this man that he is an ugly, arrogant person who deserves to be punished by God. And he knows when I talk about the lively punishment that he got from God, he knows what I'm talking about. He knows what I'm talking about, okay? So, he doesn't take lesson from the punishment that Allah uh, inflicted him with. He keeps going more and more with his arrogance and with his uh, resentment and hatred against the Prophet of Islam, the seal of prophethood on earth. So, let me say this to him. It is your God who made sex with Mary, according to your book, not according to us. No, we don't believe this. If there is no Islam today, no refutation will be against your book about this. It is your God, according to your scripture, who had sex with, Ma with Mary, the mother of Jesus, when she was asking this question, how can I have a child while no man had touched me? Then the answer came to her, that God will come upon you and he will overshadow you. So this is how you'll be having a baby called Jesus. That's it. Before you talk about Muhammad, and that kind of system, you know, having concubines and going sexually into them, okay, having intercourse with them, this was a system that people were dealing with even in your... Uh, even in your own world. Ah, even in your own scripture. And I'll show you that now. So, but, but this is not the only problem that God said to Mary, I'll show you how to have a baby. I'll, I will come upon you and I'll overshadow you. So don't forget this, David. This is not the only problem. The, only, the, the other problem is that you linked Jesus to the genealogy of David who used to be having sex with his neighbor's wife. So he is also what? He is a fornicator. And your New Testament keeps describing Jesus as the son of David. That means the son of the fornicator. But not only David, even Abraham himself. When Sarah could not bear children, she said to Abraham, this is your concubine, Hajar. Go into her and have child through her. And he did. Then after that, he married Hajar. See? So why don't you say that Abraham had sex with his concubine? Why only the Prophet Muhammad? You unfair person. See, your problem is that your house is made of glass. And you keep stoning the others, and you don't know that the type of glass you have is very thin, very slim. It can easily smash your glass. That's your problem. Why do you have to attack? Why don't you speak politely, respectfully? We can have dialogue, but look at the arrogance. It's been drawn between your eyes, and everybody can see it. You are arrogant. So, so David, he committed adultery. Abraham, according to you, ah, yes, having sex with her, you use the word in order to imply to others that this is not a legal way of communication. No, no, it is legal. So when it's legal, even your Bible forces you to believe that it's legal, then don't use the term Muhammad had sex with Maria, okay? The other thing is, not only that, the other thing is that you, you have interfered Joseph the carpenter in the family tree of Jesus. And uh, uh, as for Mary having a child without being touched by Joseph the carpenter because she used to be his fiance, then she was found pregnant, that means Joseph the carpenter shouldn't be having any kind 
of interference in Jesus' uh, family, family tree. So, you interfered Joseph the carpenter. You made Jesus the son of the fornicator David. You made Jesus the son of the fornicator Abraham. You made God having sex with Mary. So, when you talk about the Prophet Muhammad, fill your mouth with perfume before you mention his name. You are an impolite person. And I have to speak nervously with you. I'm not an uh, illogic person. I am, Ill I am logic. I am logic person. But I, have, but I have a jealousy for my prophet, whom you are unpolitely, impolitely speaking against him. So anyway, Abraham did not have only Hajar as a concubine. According to the book of Genesis, uh, he had many. The Genesis ch uh, 20, uh, chapter 25, verse 1. Okay? Um, uh, also in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 21, verse 10. If uh, you want to fight your enemies and you have a lot of concubines, then you want to marry one of them. You have concubines. That means you, you can have contact with them. But if you, want, if you found one beautiful among them, now this one you can take her as a wife. How can you take her as a wife? It's, I, I'm not going to speak. I'm going to mention only what, I'm going to quote what the Bible says. If you see among the concubines a beautiful woman, and you stick yourself to her, and you took her as a wife, then when you enter, when she enters your house, you should shave her hair and trim her nails and take off her clothes of uh, slavery. Then she sits in your house and she keeps crying for her father and her mother. One month, keep crying. She must keep crying for one whole month, okay? Then after that, after the period of one month crying, then you can marry her. <laughs> I'm not going to give any comment. I'll, I'll just leave it. Uh, considering respect to other Christians, not you. The second Chronicles, chapter 11, verse 18. Rabam had taken for himself 18 wives and 60 concubines. Would you say that Rabam was having sex with his concubine? No. Oh, it's only against Muhammad, only, okay, yeah, yeah, so, oh, well, Solomon, also, Solomon uh, had taken for himself 700 wives, you keep arguing with us about four wives, having four wives in Islam, having four wives, polygamy in Islam, your Bible is saying that Abraham, uh, Solomon had 700 wives, hmm, and uh, 300 concubines. 300 concubines, 600 wives. The um, first book of Kings, chapter 11, verse 1. So what I want to say to you before I end, okay? Respect yourself, okay? And take a whole bottle of perfume and fill your mouth with it before you talk about the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. You have accepted the term coming over, okay, and overshadow Mary. You have accepted, you have accepted the adulterer, astaghfirullah, that's not my belief, the adulterer David to be as a father of Jesus. Doesn't that give any shame to Jesus by ascribing him to be the grandson of David, the adulterer? You have accepted Joseph the carpenter who had nothing to do with any kind of communication with Mary. You have interfered him. You held the Jews to point their fingers of accusation against Mary. You held the Jews to give such accusation against Mary by adding, interfering the name of Joseph the carpenter in the family tree of Mary. So this is another shame that uh, the, the, the broken hands of those who wrote these things in your scriptures have written it. Isn't it enough, the punishment of God upon you through your kids? Can you bear another punishment from God? 
because of your arrogance and lively benefit that you can get from those fanatic evangelical people to attack this messenger whom Allah chose him to be the final messenger on earth. What do you want? Are you angry that he was in Arabia? Well, most if not all the prophets were sent by God with the mission of mess messagehood in this particular area. And now you have, uh, you have Jews who are talking about the black box, about Mecca, to be the holy place that people forgot about. And it is the holy place that Musa dwelt in for a particular time. So what is, what is your objection against God for sending this messenger? that have corrected your corrupted belief. And as a result, millions, forget about millions, regularly, regularly, or let's say the average of those who come to Islam in your country are 20,000 at least. And they say, we're proud to be Muslims. We're happy to be Muslims, unlike you. So taste the punishment of God, taste the Taste the um, embarrassment, lively embarrassment in life and wait for the punishment in the hereafter if you do not repent and return to Allah. Goodbye.